Welcome back to Good Morning KU. I'm Maddie and this I'm is Lizzie. It's been a while since we've been here. We've had spring break. We had some snow days leading up to spring mm -hmm. break, but we're back better than ever. Um, what's all been going on? There's a lot that's been happening. So obviously, like you said, we had the snow day, which we didn't get to have our show, unfortunately. And then um, everyone's on spring break and the NCAA tournament. How's your bracket doing? Oh, it's not looking good. But as long as KU ends up winning it in the end, then I'm good. Oh, yeah. Um, there were a couple of bad losses in the first round that really, really got my bracket down. Mm -hmm, um, you do. Once Kentucky lost, that's when I was like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> as long as KU makes a deep run, that's all I care about. Right. I don't care about the bracket. Me too. Well, also speaking of spring break, how was yours? Oh, it was honestly a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Chicago, kind of toured around the city. I went to the Blackhawks game. They played the Bruins. Lost in overtime. It's fine. And then <laughs> I went to my first Bulls, Bulls game. I was super excited. Like I said, it was my first game. I love the Bulls. And so I'm not from Chicago, so I've never been able to like really see them because the NBA is not like close to where I'm at. But it was a lot of fun. My favorite player was ruled out 30 minutes before the gates opened. <laughs> That wasn't as fun, but what, where did you go? I went to Florida, Panama City Beach, and I went with a big group of people from my dorm floor, and we just hung out and celebrated St. Patty's Day and just enjoyed the weather, unlike here. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. It's freezing today. It makes me want to go back to Chicago, which surprisingly was like in the 60s all week. Really? Yeah. That's pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Um, from the rest of our crew, Walker went to Destin, Florida. Mm -hmm. He was with a big group of his friends. He told me they yep. had a lot of fun. Yep. And I love his friend next to him with the Chiefs um, swim trunks on. Yep. Those are awesome. <laughs> and then um, Nathan went to Chicago. In that picture, he was bowling. Don't know about you, but I mm -hmm. personally love to bowl. I do, too. He said he was with his girlfriend in that. And it was nice because he got to just hang out around home and chill and see the people he loves. So sure. that's cool. Um, Michaela went to the World War One Memorial in KC in this picture that's just like kind of from the top of it overlooking the rest of the city. That's super cool. I've never been there. Have you? Um, yes. I went on like a high school trip a couple of years ago and we didn't actually go to the top of it, but we just went through. It's, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. And then Justice, he actually spent his spring break um, trying out a new video game called Elden Ring. He said his three words to describe it are dark, addicting, and extremely challenging. And he gave it five out of five stars and would recommend to anyone who loves video games. He explained the plot to me earlier, and I don't know. All I have to say is it's nothing like Animal Crossing, so I don't think it's, I don't think it's for me. <laughs> Um, Grayson went to Mexico, and then if you see here, maybe, she found a new little friend. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> Itala did, this one was really cool to me. She went to the Big 12 tournament, and she actually worked it. Um, she um, is part of the Spanish broadcasting, and she produced the games. So that's super cool. She's like getting to see all of that stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I really wanted to go to the Big 12 tournament, but I was like, that's when I was getting ready to leave. Mm -hmm. and, um, I just think it would have been really cool mm -hmm. to get to be there, honestly. Um, Chloe went rock climbing in Utah. Mm -hmm. She was just like out and about camping. That I, looks so cool. That's such a cool picture. Terrifying, <laughs> but yeah, props to you, Chloe. And then Barry, he's from Kansas City and he just spent time around home and he hung out with friends specifically at Sky Zone. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like everyone had a really good break. I mean, a lot of different things going on, but overall, it's really cool to hear about everyone's breaks. Yeah, for sure. But um, honestly, I'm kind of glad to be back with all my friends back here in Lawrence, um, especially looking forward to the next KU game mm -hmm. tomorrow. I'm a little nervous. No easy I games. Am too. No more easy games. And so it's definitely going to be. It'll be a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, that's all we have today. Um, we'll see you here next week. Thank you. Why doesn't my skin look like theirs? Why is my nose so big? I'm never going to look like those girls.
Hey, KU. I'm Nathan Smile, and today I'm joined with our special guest, uh, president of the Kansas Broadcasters Association, Allison Maisie. Allison, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited and happy to be here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about why you're here? Sure. So the Kansas Association of Broadcasters is hosting a student seminar on April 7th, and we're inviting college and high school students from around the state to join us for a panel to learn about our industry and also to network with current professionals to um, sharpen their skills, find internships, jobs, and then celebrate with us at our awards luncheon that's happening at noon. Okay, for sure, gotcha. So the Kansas Broadcast Association, can you tell me a little bit more about that and how you just managed to end up there? Sure. So the KB represents the 290 full power TV and radio stations in the state of Kansas. And we exist to do three things. We um, advocate, we educate, and we celebrate with our members. So we advocate for their rights here at the state le level and also federally in Washington. We celebrate them with our station awards and also with our student awards. We interact with a lot of high school and college students as well, hence our seminar. Mm -hmm. And um, we educate through various activities throughout the year, whether that's seminars, webinars, continuing ed. So we're here to represent them and make their jobs easier and promote the industry. Gotcha, for sure. Uh, so you said it's mainly for students. Uh, which type of students or maybe any other people would benefit from coming to this? So the student seminar is for any broadcast journalism, mass media, or communications high school or college student within the state. So uh, we're hoping to have a great turnout from KU because the event is happening here at the uh, student union. It starts at 8.30 and will go to about 2 p.m. So if you are aspiring to a career in broadcast, then this event is for you. Awesome, definitely. Uh, speaking of KU, I think you had mentioned earlier that you actually were a student here. Uh, any points or uh, tips that you could give to you know, any aspiring students that want to go into the broadcast field? Yes. So I, I was a student here. I'm a proud graduate of the KUJ school. I was a stratcom major, and I actually found my internship when I was a senior in college through the Kansas Association of Broadcasters. They helped place me at Channel 13. And I would encourage students to explore every opportunity that they have to learn. So even if you're a strategic communications major, if you have the opportunity to visit a newsroom or learn, a, learn about something that maybe you don't think that you're going to pursue immediately out of school, you never know what could happen later in your career and where that skill set will come in handy. So try to learn as much as you can. For sure, yeah. Um, and then for the, uh, the program that you're talking about, you mentioned a panel. Uh, who's going to be on that panel? So our panel consists of four professional broadcasters, and we try to represent different facets of the industry. So we have a news director attending. Uh, we have two news directors, from one from a TV station in Topeka and another in Kansas City. We have a general manager from Cumulus in Topeka that's attending, as well as on-air talent. Um, from Eagle Communications in Hutchinson. So um, students can, the panel is focusing on tips and tricks to kickstart your career and transitioning from into a professional newsroom or a professional job in broadcast. So they'll be giving advice on, these are the things that you should be pursuing right now in your internship. These are some things that you can ex expect your first one to two years as a professional broadcaster. And then a Q&A session at the end. So we're focusing on giving you guys the most practical advice to ensure your success upon graduation. Gotcha. Um, should students bring anything to this event? Uh, if you are job searching, bring your resume because one portion of the event is a career fair and we have a lot of different uh, stations attending and it's an excellent networking opportunity. So bring your resume and um, yeah, a good, uh, prepare to have a good time. So that's really all you need. For sure, yeah. Um, well, with that, is there anything else that you wanted to add on? I don't think so. No, just rock chalk. I'm glad to be back in my, at my alma mater. So thanks for having me today. Of course. Thank you for coming. Uh, and with that, we'll be uh, going to a break, and we'll be right back with the news. From adversity, we rose. We made history and became pioneers, voyagers, champions, jayhawks.
and when our chant rises, haunting and hallowed, Jayhawks are telling the world what's near. Victory. Welcome back. I'm Barry. And I'm Justice. This is your Thursday Good Morning KU News Update. The Russian invasion into Ukraine is now entering its fourth week with more devastation than progress. U.S. officials estimate that more than 6,000 Russian soldiers have died in just the first two weeks of the conflict. U.N. authorities say that nearly 900 Ukrainian civilians have been killed and that 3.3 million Ukrainians have fled the country. The Russian army has captured the southern port of Maripol, although fierce hand-to-hand -hand fighting is reported on the streets. The capital city of Kyiv remains under Ukrainian control, with the Russian convoy stalled just a few miles away. Ukrainian President Zelensky has continually asked the Western NATO countries for weapons in a no-fly zone, while the Russians have reportedly asked China for weapons as well. All attempts at diplomacy have so far failed. The KU men's basketball team is in Chicago for the weekend Sweet 16 round. The number one seed Jayhawks will take on number four Providence on Friday at 6.30 p.m. With the victory, Kansas will play again on Sunday against the winner of the Iowa State-Miami game. Obviously, KU is familiar with fellow Big 12 conference member Iowa State, but also have a connection to this Miami team. Former Jayhawk Charlie Moore is averaging nearly 13 points per game for the Hurricanes and was instrumental in early round upsets over USC and Auburn. And for more on the current Jayhawks, we'll toss it over to Walker and Dylan. Thanks, Barry. Senior Ochai Abaji is one of the four finalists for the Naismith Trophy, which recognizes the men's player of the year. Teammate Christian Brown says that Ochai is not only a great player, but also a humble leader. If you don't check Twitter and look look for his awards, he will never say anything to you, so you'll never know. Um, but yeah, he doesn't he doesn't talk about himself ever. Um, you know, he'll just send a couple of texts here and there, just about all right, guys, we got to focus up. You know, a couple more games here and there, and he knows what you know what winning brings for everybody, and that's what he's most excited for. Former Jayhawks to be National Player of the Year are Danny Manning and Frank Mason. The baseball team lost an extra innings last night at Wichita State. The Shocker scored runs in the 8th, 9th, and 10th innings to turn a 5-3 deficit into a 7-5 victory. The Jayhawks are now 8-11 overall and head to Stillwater, Oklahoma this weekend for a Big 12 Conference Series with the Cowboys. The softball team went 3-4 over spring break, hosting both the Jayhawk Invitational and the Rock Chalk Challenge. The Jayhawks are now 10-15 overall and will also travel to Wichita State on Wednesday for a 6 p.m. matchup with the Shockers. The track and field teams wrapped up their indoor season with three All-American finishes. Pole vaulters Zach Bradford and Clayton Sims placed 7th and 8th, respectively, while high jumper Riley Anderson cleared 5 feet 10 inches to finish in 8th place as well. And finally, the ten tennis team won the Big 12 Conference matches this weekend at the Jayhawk Tennis Center. The Jayhawks knocked off TCU 6-1 on Friday and then won a closer than the score indicates match against Texas Tech on Sunday. With the number one singles match tied in the third set, freshman Mariana Velasquez came back from a set down to get the number six singles a point in a 4-2 victory. Kansas is now 9-6 on the season and will host a Wednesday doubleheader against Kansas City. And that will wrap it up for today's news update in this week's show. Have a great day, Jayhawks.